Hello and welcome once again to Gavit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be making a rocket. Now this is meant to be a continuation of getting good at Blender and we're looking closely at hard surface modeling. I get lots of questions about hard surface modeling. So this is to brush up your hard surface modeling skills. Okay, so let's start with the basic shape. I've got my cube and I'm going to subdivide it. So select the cube and control three will add a subdivision with three levels. So it's the same as going across to the modifiers and selecting a subdivision with three levels. I'm also going to right click on that and shade smooth. If you're using 2.7, it'll be up in the menus in object mode. So first of all, I'm going to get the shape of the body. I'll simply scale this up in the Z axis. So S then Z. You can see my screencast keys down the bottom left hand corner and we'll make it somewhere around there. And I want it to go in at the top and bottom. So it's more of a point, especially at the top. So the main reason I've used a cube is because cubes have quads. So if I go into edit mode now with tab and quads, which you can see on my cube, are much easier to control your subdivision surface modifier with because I can do loop cuts. So I'm going to do one around the middle. So one just there and immediately it changes the shape of my object. And then I can press three on my keyboard and go to face mode. Your face mode in 2.7 will be down here. Select the top face and scale it in. I need a bit more support around the middle here. So I'm going to press control R and make a loop around the middle there and back to my faces and scale in the top. Okay, so it's sort of looking a bit egg shaped and I'll adjust these loops a tiny bit. So into edge mode with two, alt click, left click in the new blender, right click in the old blender and I can select an edge loop and GG will grab and slide that edge loop so I can create any sort of rocket shape I want just using these two edge loops and the top and bottom faces. I think I'm going to make the middle ones a bit wider in fact. So I'll shift alt click this one and I'll scale them out slightly. So it's going to be a really rounded rocket there. That's a bit more like it. You can, if you feel like you're seeing a bit of the edges here, you can up your subdivision surface modifier. Be careful, don't go too high. If I go into wireframe, you can see how many subdivisions that is. And this is absolutely fine. I wouldn't go anything above this really. Okay, so let's make a little knobbly bit at the top. So in order to do this, it may as well be a separate object, but I want it to be in the same place as this top face. So let's select that face and I'm going to duplicate it, Shift D. Now there's still the same object, so I'm going to press P to separate selection, separate selection. So now this is a new object, back into object mode, and then I can select that one. In fact, in 2.8, I can do multi-object editing. So let's have a go at that, in fact. So I'll select both of them with shift and I'll go into edit mode. And now I can select this top face, zoom in on it with full stop on my numpad, and I can manipulate this shape now. This is very exciting, new for me. So I'll extrude that out. I believe I've still got the other face selected as well. So I'm just gonna grab that and pull it down really slightly so I can grab the new one. There it is. <laughs> Not as easy as I first thought it was gonna be. Okay, let's extrude that out to about there. Use my inset tool with I and then extrude that out to be a point. I'm going to change this shape in a second, but let's just attach it to the bottom rocket shape. So I'm actually finding multi-object editing a bit awkward at the moment. So I'm going to go into object mode and grab that in the Z axis and just pull it down. Okay, so my shape isn't curving round, so I need to do some adaptations there. So with the bottom face selected, I'll inset that. That's great. And I will select this face loop with Alt, left click or right click in 2.79 to select this face loop around here. And that all depends on which edge I hover over. I'm selecting face loops, but it is important which edge I'm looking at. And I'll grab that in the Z axis, G then Z, and pull that down. Okay, so that's in the right place now. Let's sharpen this area up. And this is where the hard surface modeling fundamentals are coming out now. I want to sharpen edges. And in order to sharpen edges or create sharper crevices, you need loops that are close together. So they're called proximity loops. If I press Control R now to add a loop cut and then drag it in, 
that's what we call a proximity loop, so it's close to the other one, and that's what causes hard edges. If I do another one coming down here, it creates an even harder edge. And the closer these two are to the middle edge, the harder this crevice will be. So let's go into object mode to see that. So that's what it looks like at the moment. And if I wanted to make that harder, I can select this edge loop and then GG to edge slide. Bring that in. I'll select this edge loop with Alt right click or Alt left click in Blender 2.8 and GG to edge slide. Now if I go into object mode, you can see it's even sharper. And that's the fundamentals of hard surface modeling. The closer your loops are together, the harder your edges will be. And these sort of big soft round edges are my loop cuts, which essentially is this loop and this loop are very far apart. So I'm going to pull those back because it's too hard a edge, about there and about there, so that's GG. And I want this to be a bit more sort of bubbly. The whole idea behind this is to be a bit bubbly. Notice that my edge loops are inside my mesh there and you can put them on top by pressing that button and that sort of guides them on top but it's not an accurate representation this button but it helps you be able to select your objects so I'm going to select this one and select this one and grab in the z-axis and pull them up I think I'll pull this one in with GG that's quite fun I wanted to go to a bit more of a point though so I'll turn this off for now and press 3 and scale that right in I'm also going to grab it in the z-axis more so it has more of a point at the end. Always zoom out a bit to see your shape and see whether you're happy with it. There's a sort of funness to that, but I think it looks a bit misshapen. I'm going to grab these edge loops in here and just scale them in a bit. I keep changing my mind. I feel like I want to hard cut in here, so I'm going to do another loop cut just in here and scale it in. And grab it in the z-axis to about there. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Perfect. So that was the top bit. Possibly overly complicated with the duplicating the face, but it means the face is in exactly the same place as the lower face. Let's work on the bottom of our shape. So I'll select my main body, into edit mode and select the bottom face. So into face mode and select that bottom face. I'll inset that and you can see what that's doing to my shape. I feel like it needs a bit more sort of so I'm going to select this face loop here and scale that in a bit. It's that sort of roundness that I want, this sort of cartoony look. And then with this middle face, let's extrude it inwards. Okay, so we've got this sort of thruster area here, but we haven't got enough supporting loops to give that any substance. So if I go into object mode, you can sort of see it just blobs its way into there. And that's not really hard surface modeling. So back into edit mode, this loop cut around here is what I want to harden. So if I go to edge mode and select that loop, the one around here, I can now just press Control B and slide my mouse left and right will uh, create a bevel. You can also hold Shift if you want more delicate increments when you're moving your mouse. So that you can see the effect that's having, which is great. If I use my wheel now and push it up one, it makes it harder because now my loops are close together there or further away and I can control them with this bevel tool. So I want fairly hard here so I'm going to bring them fairly tight to about there. That's great. I also want this area so I'll press Alt left click on that and I would like a bit more of a structure to that so I'm going to press Control B and then hold down Shift again and move my mouse and can you see the structure it's giving it. I don't want it too hard to about there that's really tight but about there so there's soft edges to go with the roundness but they still are sort of like a hard surface and once you've done these sort of bevels and increased your edges you may feel like you need to adapt your shape more now you can see it so I'm going to select these three edge loops as well and I want to bring them in slightly so scale them in about there nice rounded looking rocket that's looking much better I just need to adapt the middle part here so three and select that face I'm going to just scale that in slightly and I would like to bevel those edges. I can't see them very easily now so I'm going to go to that mode there, adjust edit cage to modify result so I can actually see it and go to edge mode with two and create the bevel again. So control B holding down shift to do a delicate bevel. You can see it sort of jumps a bit there. Uh, don't worry about that, that's 
just adapting to the new shape. And about there will do nicely. So now I have a cool looking rocket body anyway. I think these edge loops need to be a little bit further away. So GG and slide those. So I've got a bit more of a graduated curve. Now I might want some sort of thruster thing coming out here. I'm going to do the same thing again. So into edit mode and select that face with three and then select that face and duplicate it. I'm going to select that face and this time I'm going to press P to separate and just by loose parts. So it should be a loose part, hopefully, all going well. Now into object mode, I can select just that face, as you can see there. It's just a nice, quick, easy way to put an object in exactly the same place. If you're finding that confusing, then just add a plane or a cube even in here and subdivide it again to the same subdivisions as you subdivided your original. So I'm going to scale that down just a touch. And notice the object origin is in the place of the original object. So they share the same origin location, which is fine. I'll just grab that in the Z axis so I can see it and I'll go into edit mode. Then I'll extrude this out. It's looking a bit strange at the moment, but if I turn this off, you can see what's going on. And I need to add my proximity loops. So control R, pull that up, control R, pull it down. And you can see my thrust there. Alternatively, I'll undo that. I can just press control B to bevel this edge, which is a bit easier really, because then I got two proximity loops either side and select this edge loop around here, which you can't do as a sphere very easily. I'm going to go into isolation mode, which is forward slash on your numpad. So we can just see that object. And because it's a cube, you can't select them as a loop cut. So I've just got to go shift around these ones, control B and bevel that. Hopefully I haven't confused anybody there, but all you're ending up with is two proximity loops or supporting loops. Then I'll just do the bottom thrust a bit, interface mode, select that bottom face, inset, extrude so it goes in. And once again, selecting the edge loops, I should be able to select them this time. I'm into edge mode, select that edge loop, control B, hold down shift, and there we go. Back to face mode, select that face. I'm going to go to my edit cage to blah, blah, blah mode. And I'm going to inset that and extrude it outwards. It looks a bit weird at the moment. I've just got to change my shape. So there's my box. And I'm going to scale this up like that and do a bevel on it. Control B, bevel. And you can sort of see my weird thruster idea here bit too long though so you're going to grab it in the z-axis make it about there and I'm probably going overboard with all these cuts and extra shapes because it should be a simple model but last one inset that and extrude it in and then I will just scale it down so it doesn't overlap the other one like that and select this edge loop same process control B hold down shift and there I've got my weird looking thruster. And then forward slash to come out of that sort of isolation mode. Now that's way too big, so I can grab it in the Z axis and it can just overlap the other one, that's absolutely fine. But there we go, I've got my sort of thruster thing there. And maybe I'll scale it down just a touch. There we go. So I've just adjusted that into position. So these are relatively easy things to start with. What about if I want some of those uh, thingy majiggies out the side here and here? Well, in order to create those, I'm going to go into front view move my cursor with shift right click in Blender 2.8 and add a cube. Scale that down so it's the right sort of size and add a subdivision surface modifier with control three. So I've added subdivision surface modifier with three iterations. Right click and change that to shade smooth. Let's go to side view and I'm going to scale that in to make sure it's nice and flat and then back to front view. So first I'm going to create that sort of shape where it comes down here. They're fins, I think. Fins, I don't know what you call them really. So into edit mode and I'll just come around the side here slightly. Face mode and select that face. Back to front view, extrude it out and I'll just grab it and pull it down slightly. And then I think we can probably add another face here. So into front view, extrude that out and grab that and pull it down. I'm going to scale in the Z zero, so that will flatten it out and scale it in. So hopefully you can see this sort of fin thing that I'm making here. 
Always look at the rest of your model for the correct size that you want. It needs to come a bit thicker out here, but that will but that will be affected by my proximity loops, which I'm going to add now. So let's go to front view, go to face mode with three, and let's just grab that face there, back to front view. And let's just position this roughly in the right place. So I'm just rotating and grabbing, and it's following that curve. You can do things like shrink wrap modifiers, but I'm not going to go too much into that just yet. That will be in the next episode. So I want a supporting loop there first, so Control R, do a loop cut, and bring that in and that's offering some support. Now let's zoom into this a bit. In fact, let's zoom out and just check the size. I think we need to scale them up a little bit. So let's go to three face mode and select this face, select this face loop back into front view. Scale that up just slightly and just check what it looks like from the side there. That's great. And now I'm going to extrude this. So E to extrude, right click to just sort of set the extrusion and then I'll scale it up. So I've got this sort of thing going on. I probably should have done that before rotating my edges, but it's such a tiny thing, it shouldn't matter at the moment. I'm now going to just sharpen this up and see what that looks like sharpened up with a proximity loop. Okay, a tiny bit of manual adjusting. So I'll select this face in here and to front view and just grab and pull that in. So it just slightly overlaps that one as well. Pull that in and we've got a nice looking fin. It's a bit rounded, you could argue, and it's very sort of straight down here. So what I'm going to do is add a loop cut around here. And that is working as a support loop, so a proximity loop, but it's quite a distance away, so you hardly notice it, but it does sort of square it up slightly. I can also deselect these along here and just slightly in front view, pull that out so it follows the contour of the body of the ship. Let's zoom in a bit more, grab and shift to move in slighter increments. It hasn't kept its structure well. I forgot when extruding that it goes more in one side than the other. So you can always select these faces and these faces, go to the side view and scale them out in the Y, scale in the Y and just bring those out so they are the same size as the other one. Now you might find it's not following the structure around here. You can add a loop cut down there as well if you want. I don't think it's necessary. I try and keep those to a minimum where possible. One area you might need another one is Control R down here. So it's got some sort of structure to the base as well. And then we can go to front view, scale that in the Z zero to flatten it out. So lastly for this session, we need to be able to duplicate this around our object. And there's an easy way to do that. So if I press seven on my numpad, I'll go to top view. I'm going to press shift S and that's to put my cursor to the world origin. So it'll go in the middle. If for some reason your objects aren't in the origin, you can select them. So I'll just select this for now. I'll come out of edit mode for that one, select this. And you can press alt G and that will remove all its location information, which is up here and it removes it. But mine, I didn't move it in the first place. So now we can select our fin, change it to 3D cursor for the pivot point, and then we can either duplicate it and rotate it round, or we can duplicate it and scale it in the x-axis. Probably just easiest to duplicate it and rotate it round. So Shift D and then R90. Shift D, R90. You could do an array modifier here as well, but this is probably quicker just to press Shift D and then R90 and we've got four fins now going around. So we've got a nice start to our rocket there. In the next episode, I will be talking about shrink wrap to create a big window in here. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.